All right, welcome back to the last part of 7.3. We'll look at these last examples, and we got some word problem types of examples that are coming, and we totally can handle them. We're just going to um, rely upon pictures and drawings. I know in some of the problems you're drawing your own pictures. I believe on the test I'll pick all problems and draw you pictures of the setups for those. So it's talking here in exercise 5. It says the angle of elevation from the top of a building 45 feet high to the top of a nearby antenna tower is 15 degrees 20 minutes. From the base of the building the angle of elevation to the tower is 29 degrees 30 minutes. Find the height of the tower. So let's remember what they want us to find. They'd like us to find this height right here, right? That yellow highlighted one. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to have to make reference to some triangles. So let me let this be A, let this be B, and let this point out here be C. And I think we're going to need the big triangle as well, the second triangle in there. And what we want in the end is we want to know what is CE. That's what they're asking, that height from C to E. We can find that. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's start working on getting some things. We know that the height of the building is 45 feet, and they have that written in there. And the angle of uh, elevation from the top of the building to the tower is 15 degrees 20 minutes. So I want to look at this triangle, and I'll outline it here. I want to look at triangle ABC. Let's look at this guy right here. Because what I need, actually, is AC. I really need to know what AC is so I can start using the bottom triangle. I need something in the bottom triangle. Make sure you remember that that bottom triangle is a right triangle. This is a chapter 2 problem down here. It's a chapter 2 problem if I can get to that triangle. Because chapter 2 is right triangles and chapter um, 7 is, well, if it's not a right triangle, can you still do some work? And the answer is yes. So angle B, which goes from the building all the way up to that line, well, we know up to that horizontal line it's 90 degrees. So angle B is 90 degrees plus the additional 15 degrees 20 minutes. So angle B is 105 degrees 20 minutes. Awesome. And we also know this little angle right here. This little angle um, in here, so angle A in that triangle is right here. Well, what's angle A? Angle A is 90 degrees minus 29 degrees 30 minutes. And if you work that out, you'll quickly see that that's 60 degrees 30 minutes. Okay, An extra 30 minutes to get us up to 30, and then 60 degrees to get us up to 90 degrees. Right, coming through there. So we know angle A, we know angle B. Um, this is not the ambiguous case of the law of sines. We have everything that we need. I now know that angle C, because right, I know two angles in the triangle. I know B, I know A. Let's go figure out what C is, just in case we need it. It's pretty easy. What's 180 degrees minus 105 degrees 20 minutes minus 60 degrees 30 minutes? Well, that's going to be 50 minutes taken off, so my end answer is going to have 10 degrees. I don't know if you need me to, to show that whole work. Um, I certainly could. Maybe I should. Somebody's going to say, hey, Jensen, you didn't show enough. So 180 degrees is 179 degrees, 60 minutes. And we're going to take off 105 degrees, 20 minutes, and 60 degrees, 30 minutes. So we're right back to chapter 1. We're doing all that subtraction. 60 minus 20 is 40, minus 30 is 10. 179 minus 105 is 174, minus 60 is, um, yeah, let's think about that. So I apologize. I said 104, but I should, I should have said 74. So 179 minus 105 is 74 degrees, minus 60 is 14 degrees. Sorry about that. And then I have the wrong symbol on this other one. 14 degrees, 10 minutes. That's what angle C is. We're showing all the steps there. So let me come back in here. I was just about to write it because I could see it. And I'm sure you're getting that way too, although it does take a little bit of getting used to. But they are trying to keep these um, degrees, minutes, seconds alive. Luckily, they don't go to seconds too often. So we have all three angles. Now remember, what do I really want to know? I'd really like to know the distance from A to C, the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Because I already got an angle in that right triangle. I can totally use sines and cosines or whatever. I just need a side in there. So let's take a look. 
um, I'll call that side length AC. That's what I want. AC times the sine of the angle opposite it. Well, that angle opposite it is B, so that's 105 degrees 20 minutes is equal to uh, 45, right? That height of the tower all over the sine of C. So I did need to know what C was, 14 degrees 10 minutes. Makes sense that we need to know that. And so what are we going to do? Just our nice algebra that we've been doing in every single problem. We're going to take 45, divide it by the sine of 14 plus 10 divided by 60. Close that parentheses. Times sine of 105 plus 20 divided by 60. And we're going to get a nice 177.32. So I'll do 177.3 feet since they had other things rounded out to the tenths. Well, that's awesome. We're almost done. Remember what we wanted. We wanted CE. So I'll bring that up there. So knowing this, I'm going to come right over to here. And we're going to use the advantage that that's a right triangle. So no problem at all. The only angle we know in there, well, we know the 90 degree angle. And we could figure out the other. But the one that's labeled 29 degrees 30 minutes, the sign of that is opposite what I want to find over hypotenuse what I just found and so you know what CE is equal to just by simple algebra 177.3 times the sine of the 29 degrees 30 minutes and so we take sine of well I can do one I can do it the way it's written 177.3 times the sine of 29.3 Oh, sorry, 29 plus uh, 30 divided by 60. Maybe you already knew that it was 29.5. Um, and so we get a nice, the height of that tower is 87.3 feet. It comes out of the 87.30 and it keeps going. But 87.3 feet is the answer to that problem. So you want to make sure you remember what you want to find. You want to make sure that you don't wholesale loot leave the right triangle stuff because you know the other stuff that's there um, so it's gonna be nice everything depends on each other that's a very much like your next classes will be just different things being pulled out so here we have um, a pilot flies her plane on a heading of 35 degrees zero minutes from a point XY um, which is 400 miles from X. Then she turns and flies on a heading of 145 degrees to point Z, which is 400 miles from her starting point X. What is the heading from Z to X? And what is the distance from Y to Z? Okay, so how are we going to get this? It's all going to be about how we're understanding the information. So a pilot flies her plane on a heading of 35 degrees from point X to Y. So, headings, they're always from the north-south line. And she's fly, flying at a 35-degree heading. I'll say that that's 35 degrees. And starting from a point X, which you'll say is right there, to a point Y, which is up here. And that went for 400 miles. Then she turns and flies on a heading of 145 degrees. So 145 degrees would be short of 180. Um, and so it's going to be right out here, maybe. We'll call that 145 degrees. And we're going to fly here for a while to a point Z, which is also 400 miles from her starting point. Okay, so my, my picture doesn't have to be exact, but I do have to have the right labeling. And so I got 145 degrees there. So what do we know? We know that um, we got to figure out some angles that are in here and see what we can, can figure out on our own. So it's a 35 degree angle there. The question is, is what is this angle right here? Um, maybe this angle X. Can we figure that out? and what that needs to be. Can we figure out what Z is? Or can we figure out what this angle is over here, angle Y, as we go through? So what do we know? Um, we definitely know that this is 35 degrees right here. 
because we have a line crossing two parallel lines and alternate interior angles would be equal. So we know it's 30, part of y is 35 degrees. This additional part is easy to find too. That additional part is 180 degrees minus 145 degrees for an additional 35 degrees. And so we're getting um, a 35 degree and a 35 degree. We're getting a 70 degree angle in there. So because you can backtrack, I'm just going to come in here and we're going to get rid of these extra lines and we're going to put in here that this angle right here is 70 degrees. Okay, so a 70 degree angle here. Now, the person that took geometry, the prerequisite for this course, also knows that this is 70 degrees. Do you see how they know that that's 70 degrees? It's because it's an isosceles triangle, so the base angles would have to be the same. And if that's 70 and 70, that's 140. So this must be a 40 degree angle right over here. And what you have are all the angles known in, that, in this problem. So this is going to be a nice law of science problem, no ambiguity whatsoever. This could have appeared in 7.1, um, but here it is in 7.2. So what do we know? We know that sine of 70 degrees all over, um, well, actually, let me stick with what we want to know. We know this is x. There's other ways to justify that that one is 70. You could have used the law of sines in order to figure out that it was 70 knowing just one angle. But I think we know from the prerequisite for this course that everybody had, or we wouldn't be in math 335 proper, um, that isosceles triangles have the base angles being the same. So x over sine 40 degrees is equal to 400 over sine 70 degrees. And so what do we get out of that? x is equal to 400 over sine 70. I'll sh show this one this time, times the sine of 40 degrees. And we just plug it in and we're done. 400 divided by sine 70 times sine 40. What matters most though is that you don't give up. So everything was in whole numbers. So I'll just round this to the nearest whole number, 274 miles. That's how far they flew on that line to get 400 miles away from their starting point with those bearings. Um, so if you didn't buy into the fact that you knew that this was 70, you could have solved for it. You could have said with just the labeling that's there, um, sine 70 degrees all over 400 is equal to the sine of z all over the same 400 and take a look what would happen you would multiply both sides by 400 and essentially you have sine 70 degrees equals sine z and so therefore z would absolutely be 70 degrees it can't be that second quadrant angle it can't be the um 110 because then if it's 110 you don't have enough for another angle in that triangle so maybe that's why it's here in case somebody didn't know that the base angles were the same I was definitely relying upon the prerequisite when I made that assumption and we went from there okay use the law of sines to prove that the statement is true for any triangle ABC with corresponding sides A B and C so this is in here. Proofs are something that's going to happen. Um, they, you just got to get a comfort level for them. But let's take a look. And they're saying use the law of sines to prove the statement is true for any right triangle. So what I'm going to do is start on the left hand side. And we're going to show the right hand side. And so the left hand side says A minus B all over A plus B. And what's the law of sines say? The law of sine says a over sine a is equal to b over sine b. Okay, so let's solve for a. If we solve for um, something like a, and I multiply both sides by sine a, I'm going to get b sine a over sine b. So hopefully that's trackable. Multiply both sides by sine a. 
sine A would go up top, so I'm just putting it up top. Now, I'm going to go ahead and substitute in. So this is a true statement based upon the law of sine. So I'm going to take this representation, and I'm going to circle it in red. And I'm going to come into this one, and let me go back to blue. And I'm going to put A in in red, just so you can track what I'm doing. This is B sine A. Oops, sine A, <laughs> all over sine B. You can see how my small brain works. B sine A, all over sine B. And then let me go back to blue. Minus B plus B. Now we're coming back to your Algebra 1 skill set. Algebra 1 said would, would, would be to simplify this complex fraction. Well, you know how to simplify that complex fraction. You're going to multiply everything through by the common denominator. So we're right back into first introduction, pre-algebra, really reinforced in algebra, down a third time in algebra 2. You're well familiar with that going through. 120 classes in geometry. Everybody going to get hit by the common denominator. And what do we end up with? Go back to black. Okay. Um, and what do we end up with? We end up with B sine A minus B sine B all over B uh, sine A plus B sine B. And so essentially all I did to do this was just try something. It said to use the law of sine. So I did it and I just solved for one of the variables. It would have been no different if I solved for B, except we'd have a bunch of A's in there and sine A's. But take a look. Out of the top, you can factor out a B. Right now we're right back to uh, beginning algebra, solving usually a chapter 6, solving um, rational equations, reducing them by factoring and canceling and look what we're left with we're left with exactly what we wanted to show the right hand side we're done so pretty cool you're going to be doing a lot of manipulation like this when they have us prove identities and so this is just a problem that they snuck in here to start that process and to get you to try stuff the worst thing that you can do is look at that and say I don't know how to do it nobody showed me how to do that nobody has to okay I'm showing you this but it's not to pair it back it's to for you to be able to say oh okay I remember how to go about a problem like this substitution making sure you may be working from one side to show the other side Side, right solving for something substituting it in clearing things out at this point right here it was all algebra there was no trig from this point on the trig was used right in the very beginning from the law of signs and that's it that is what your calculus experience would be like the calculus concept will be easy check it's the algebra cleanup if you're not prepared for that algebra you're going to have a very difficult time in subsequent classes but we know that you knew what your major was and that you cared when you went through algebra so this will be a nice honing of skills that needs to happen